Well, hello there. Fancy meeting you. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Could you possibly introduce yourself, uh, where you studied archaeology and also uh, your most recent job? Hello, Mark. Um, well, I didn't study archaeology. I went to um, art college. I did a degree in fine art and I, I got a BA back in 1975. Then I did a one year art teaching course, postgraduate one year art teaching course which didn't lead to a career because all the teaching jobs dried up. And so I began digging. And um, ever since then, I've worked in archaeology, uh, most part as a field archaeologist and uh, part as an illustrator. And in fact, um, I got into archaeology because the first site I worked on was advertising for somebody who could draw to copy plans for security copying and that was an imperial that's how long ago it was <laughs> it's in feet and inches and uh, so i spent uh, six months in a caravan at uh, mucking in essex which is a very famous site. Mm -hmm. nearly all the archaeologists you've heard of today passed through there in their youth yeah. um i didn't know any of them but, <laughs> but it was a great place to learn because it had everything it was a a multi-period site of the you know, richest um, quality you could, that you could wish for to learn about any kind of uh, digging. Um, and that's how I started really. And uh, um, I've worked all over the country since then, going for longer term jobs, um, you know, quite often as a draftsman or an illustrator. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I ended up uh, working on Hadrian's Wall in the 80s. Um, for the National Trust um, and that was because the people I uh, worked for previously couldn't keep me on all year so uh, I, I moved, uh, my last three or four jobs were moved because of that <laughs> um, so I, they asked me to find a job for the summer which was up on the wall Excellent. and then the person I worked for on the wall for the National Trust uh, said he had enough money to keep me on all year round and so no contest really, I really so um, I like Northumberland very much, and um, and then I got to know the people at um, South Shields Fault, and when that when the work on Hadrian's Wall um, out in the central sector there had finished, I moved over and started to work at South Shields in 1987, and I've worked uh, ever since, and not just at South Shields but at lots of different sites for Tyne and Weir museums, mm -hmm. many different sites for different periods. Uh, and lots of illustration work as well at Walls, Walls End, Segedun and, uh, and South Shields and uh, the last site I actually worked on for them was at uh, Shotton near Morpeth. Mm -hmm. um, one year it was uh, the medieval village, the, de the deserted medieval village um, and then the following year on another field uh, we discovered uh, an early Saxon settlement of um, halls made out of posts, uh, so the, all that survived of them were, were post hole patterns, basically. And the whole thing was um, going to be open cast for coal, that was the reason why we were digging there. And, um, and that's when I last uh, splashed around in a world of mud. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Your work here in the uh, Sagadunum, um, yeah. what, what did that entail? What did you do uh, on that excavation? Well, I was in charge of the drawing office at South Shields for most of the 90s. And then uh, when the project at Sagadunum started up, which is now this, uh, the whole deal with the museum and the bath house and the fort laid out, and when that started, they needed as many people as possible here. So I was torn away from that job, which I loved very much. and. Uh, came over here and started um, excavating in the fault um, and I excavated the bee pit as well, the pit head of the old Walls End bee pit which started in 1780 and um, we were hoping to, ex the only thing that you can't see at Walls End is the ditch north of Hadrian's Wall, we were hoping to find a bit of that on the bee pit site but the bee pit turned out to be so nicely preserved that we kept uh, those structures instead and never got down to the level of, uh, of um, the wall ditch.
which is underneath all the boilers <laughs> and the around the shaft. Um, so th those are the main things I did here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, are there any other um, notable sites or, or things that you particularly enjoyed while working uh, on Hadrian's Wall in, in this part of the world? Well, I, <coughs> yeah, I enjoyed working out on the wall very much. That was really interesting. And uh, I've also, um, since then, I've uh, uh, been doing uh, teaching adult ed classes mm -hmm. um, in the Tyne and Weir area uh, to, in, for adults, adult education. And um, I always include trips to different sites so that I can go and see places that I was interested in and also go with a nice group of like-minded people. Um, so we often have trips along the wall. It's such a, such a varied um, place for archaeology that you go and find anything you like there, in, usually in one walk. But probably the, the loveliest other place that I worked is uh, Pembrokeshire years ago. I did a dig down there um, on a Neolithic site for just 10 weeks, but um, I was able to do some nice walks in the Preselles and visit some excellent sites. So many standing stones and um, hill forts and that, that you could take here in one walk. Mm -hmm. uh, that, um, you know, you're a sport for choice really. Well, and, then, and probably a coast as lovely as Northumberland. Mm -hmm. So have you, um, have you particularly, have you found it, uh, have you enjoyed the fact that you've been able to combine your interest in graphic art and design with archaeology? Um, and what sort of shape has that taken? Has it been reconstruction drawings or has it been plans of sites? What, what kind of work have you been, have you, how, how have you merged those it's two been mostly, It's been mostly, most of my illustration work has been, it's been uh, produced for reports really, lots of finds drawing and plans and sections mm -hmm. and getting f photographs uh, to a suitable standard for, for a publication. But really, I was, I've been interested in archaeology for, for much longer than when I started digging. Mm -hmm. um, right back into my early teens, I can trace you know, distinct signs of being interested in a subject. But it's just that I had no contact with it. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I would have started digging much sooner than I actually did. Although mucking is only four miles from where I was brought up. Oh, right, yeah. you know, but it was, um, it's right off the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, none of my family background is to do with something that might be considered kind of academic, like archaeology. Mm -hmm. I mean, archaeology certainly isn't academic, really. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's what most people think of it mm -hmm. as. And uh, so really, the only reason that I got into it was, and I had to remind myself of this years later, was really because that site had the money through a government training scheme to take on local people. Mm. And, they, and, and I was lucky enough that to, as soon as I saw that little card in the Labour Exchange saying someone to copy plans on an archaeological site, I knew that was, was what I wanted to do. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And I just was uh, really fascinated by um, every period of stuff, really. Mm. I don't really fancy digging any recent burials, but uh, apart from that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, they um, have done that, you know, in the infirmary in Newcastle. Some of the people I've worked with um, had to dig the Victorian cemetery there before they built the Centre for Life. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, right. Um, well, actually, yeah, I've done something similar in South Shields, actually. It's interesting when you, mm. you can meet people who are probably related to the people that you're digging up. Yes. <laughs> it's really kind of weird. Um, okay, well, what, what for you is, is the most satisfying aspect of archaeology or being an archaeologist? What, what do you find most intriguing and satisfying about, about archaeology? Well, I'm really interested in the subject itself, mm -hmm. you know, from every angle. I, um, you know, I really like trying to un untangle that puzzle that you get on every site of trying to understand the layers and the structures and the finds. And I also like working with people very much, like meeting new people and, uh, and, and introducing them to archaeology very often and getting them happy to enjoy it. And, uh, and so um, commercial 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 archaeology is rather taking the wind out of that particular idea and 
in that uh, one of the nasty things it does is prevent you from having local people and volunteers on site. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. but so you know, I enjoy every aspect of it really. Okay. You know, I enjoy drawing things with pencil on site, and that's another thing that modern archaeology has removed from the pleasure <laughs> with um, GPS and uh, total station. Mm -hmm. it, people do all the planning on site with those these days, don't they? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> So, so you touched on commercial archaeology there. Um, I mean, but what what challenges do you think archaeology faces in the coming years? Do you think commercial archaeology is a is a viable model into the future, or do you think archaeology, both commercial and academic, will and is changing? What, what do you what do you feel about that? It changes every few years. I mean, yeah. People used to complain about the county unit system, and, uh, and then they complained about this the sort of non-system that existed before mm -hmm. that. All those unpublished sites from the 60s, everybody moaned about that and, uh, and then um, they introduced commercial archaeology which probably got as many unpublished sites, you know. Mm -hmm. People these days are worried about curating all the archives from these companies that come and go mm -hmm. and, uh, and also curating the, the finds and how to publish these the sites that uh, all these commercial companies are producing? That um, you know, I think it's uh, the worst system of all, really. And uh, you know, I don't think archaeology is a suitable subject for a, a commercial enterprise, quite honestly. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And um, well, in, in that sense, then, what what, um, what what advice would you give to aspiring? Uh, young or indeed old archaeologists. <laughs> Anyone coming into archaeology for the first time, what would you, what advice would you give them? Do you think? Well, I think, um, I mean, I think uh, it's quite seriously that it's. Uh, I think possibly one of the mistakes I made um, with um, working for time in museums was that I stayed a long time. I worked for them from 1987 mm -hmm. through to two years ago, and really. Um, this is probably just me really, but if you want me to give some advice, mm -hmm. I can only base it on my experience. Yeah. And I would say that um, I think people coming into archaeology need to move around and do a variety of work and get lots of skills. You need as many strings to your bow as possible in archaeology, so you, you're able to take jobs of different kinds, especially these days, you mm -hmm. know, GPS, GIS, total station, all this. Uh, laser scanning on site instead of drawing plans now. Mm -hmm. You need all those skills really, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the usual skills of being able to understand any kind of site that you're confronted with mm -hmm. um, by personal experience, but also by moving around and um, not staying in one place for too long, you maintain your contacts with other places and it, that again gives you more opportunities um, as jobs um, come and go, and uh, they certainly do these days, because of commercial archaeology, <laughs> <laughs> mostly. Okay. My, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And so, so I really do think, you know, archaeologists have always had to move around. Archaeology is not really a, a long-term job as such, because mm -hmm. projects must finish. Mm -hmm. You must, you must dig the site. You must do all the post-ex work, and you must. Um, uh, publish, mm -hmm. you know, and then you go and do another project, mm -hmm. maybe for another organisation. So archaeologists have always been itinerant. Mm -hmm. So don't be tempted to get too settled. They used to say this about people who worked for county units. That, you know, they got settled a little bit complacent and never tried hard anymore. So you always got to watch that, really, mm -hmm. for okay. an edgy subject like archaeology. <laughs> Excellent. So, so in some ways, uh, you would say that ironically, archaeology is isn't stuck in the past, it is actually constantly changing and if you don't keep up with that then you're you're stuck in some ways. Or rather you shouldn't allow yourself to become stuck. But That's right, I hope it changes again and that this uh, silly system of tendering mm -hmm. for everything, which is just done as a, a sort of um, what's the word, as a philosophical thing, it's not done because it's the best way of doing it, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, I hope that goes away and uh, archaeology be could become the more fun and interesting subject to use to be. Wonderful, <laughs> friend. Um, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for talking. A pleasure. <laughs>
Best of luck, everyone. <laughs>